Where you find one ordinarily, you'll find a large number of them like this. Students from the University of Vermont are spending time in the woods. Like many Vermonters, they're learning the fine points of hunting. If they're lucky, they might even go home with something to put on their dinner table tonight. I think people understand that it's a living, a living creature and that it, it follows some of the rules of, of living things that they're familiar with, but breaks other of those rules. These students aren't hunting fauna, or even flora for that matter. Their prey is in a kingdom all its own. They're on the prowl for fungi. If you find edibles, that's cool. I find it personally a thrill to find deadly ones, just go like, ooh. It is a little brown mushroom, or an LBM, we call them sometimes. And uh, it looks sort of inviting in a certain way, but this has the deadly amatoxins that uh, will destroy, you know, organs, your liver and your kidney. I always teach people the poisonous mushrooms uh, before I start to teach them the edible ones. Terry Delaney teaches this class on mycology, which is the study of fungi. He says even students who are initially drawn by the prospect of edible mushrooms are fascinated by the incredibly complex diversity of the organism. They recycle carbon from fallen trees and other uh, material leaves. Um, and without fungi, um, all this carbon would pile up. But the fungi play a critical role in liberating that uh, fixed carbon into the soil, which can then be utilized by um, plants that come along later. In fact, about 80% of plants rely on partnerships with fungi. The class is a combination of lectures and foraging expeditions, and time in the lab to examine and identify what was found. Although many students do enjoy finding the edibles, the focus of the class is on biology and the role of various fungi in the ecosystem. They don't photosynthesize, they don't act like plants in a lot of ways, but people think of them as plants, so the mystery of not understanding how they work, I think, plays into their interest in culture. One of the coolest things about mushrooms is each one can have a lot of different purposes, and there's so much diversity in it. It's like one you can use, like you can draw on it, like the artist conch that we saw, or you can use the you know shaggy mane to draw with, or some mushrooms you use to like start fires. There's all sorts of different uses for them. So what's so fun about uh, studying mycology is mushrooms come in all shapes and sizes, and they're everywhere in nature. Ann Hazelrig runs the UVM Plant Diagnostic Clinic, where she helps commercial growers and home gardeners identify and manage insects and disease. Many of these diseases are caused by fungi. Winter oyster, we've got the luminescent uh, pinellus. I think mushrooms are fascinating. Mycology is fascinating because we encounter them in all parts of our lives. We eat them. They're in our breads. They cause our breads to rise and beer to ferment and uh, they're used in drugs, you know, helpful drugs and um, cause plant diseases. So it, it, they're a fascinating organism. Hazelrig is taking the class to learn more about the disease side of the organism and also to get more familiar with identifying fungi in general, including the mushroom she found on the way to this interview. What's this one that you have here? Well, I don't know. I just found it. It was growing in mulch and I have no idea what it is. So I'll take it up to the lab and I'll get a spore print and take a look at the spores and try to go through a key to figure it out. I feel like mushrooms don't always get the respect they deserve. And, Carrie uh, Oster is a self-professed mushroom nerd uh, who joined a local mycology society uh, when she was in high school. Uh, now that she's a plant biology major at UVM, learning more about how fungi fit into the forest ecosystem will help her understand what's going on. There's a lot of variations on this in terms of size and dimensions. And you can learn like, oh, this mushroom is growing on this tree, but this kind of mushroom only infects already dead woods, so you know that the mushroom didn't cause the tree to die. Or just when you find a log that's on the ground and some of the shell fungi are growing at 90 degree angles to each other, you can kind of tell by the mushrooms when the tree fell over. It's a lot of fun too. When you get out in the forest and you start to uh, and notice these things. Uh, often you'll sit down and start to look at a mushroom that you've just discovered and after immersing yourself into the environment for a minute or two you realize there's two or three others within arm's reach. It's certainly not too hard to find several species of fungi within arm's reach. While there are about 10,000 named species of mushrooms, 
Scientists estimate that 80 to 90 percent of all the fungi on Earth have not yet been named or described by science. And even locally, uh, no doubt there are some undescribed species, but uh, locally we, we certainly have uh, many thousands of species uh, of mushrooms that, uh, that could be found. And uh, I would say that uh, just estimating there are several hundred that are common. This semester we've seen you know, several hundred for sure. The abundance of species can be seen back at the lab with the wide variety of mushrooms the students have gathered. I found some oyster mushrooms, also the winter oyster, some amanita mushrooms. I found a winter oyster and that's the only one that I know what it is yet, but uh, the rest of these we're going to be micro IDing microscopically by looking at the spores and uh, also by going through the keys and looking at the macroscopic features. The students will each gather and identify a collection of about 15 different fungi. That will involve spending some time in the lab looking closely at identifying features. So what is it that you're looking at on the microscope? A few things. Most importantly for identifying the mushrooms, it seems to be the spores uh, seem to have the most characteristics and that seems to be the end all for uh, for what something is, is if you look at its spore and its characteristics, that can make or break your ID. Well, it's not edible, but it's, uh, it's spectacular. Usually you find it way high up in a tree. So it's Several businesses around the state are cultivating edible mushrooms, and the popularity of local food has led to an increase in foraging. Delaney says that all of the attention just adds to the interest in fungi, which can lead to fruitful results. You could study fungi for a lifetime and still be learning things at the end of your lifetime. Anne Hazelrig says the class has expanded her appreciation for the subject. I find that, you know, whether I'm on a run or walking in the woods, I'm always kind of looking down to see what, what I see, and that's fun. So it's a, a way to connect with nature, I think. You know, so I, it will be a lifelong learning thing for me. I saw something, an off-color brown in here. Huh. From the woods to the lab, these UVM students are in search of answers. With its many mysteries, the complex world of fungi will be worthy of pursuit for years to come. In Burlington, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Yep, no problem.